Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I am your host, Katherine Basu. And today I am super excited because I'm going to be joined by a amazing, inspirational, and motivational guest who is not in the fitness industry, but is someone who likes to tune into podcast shows while getting a move on. So because of that, I am going to highly, highly, highly recommend that you do that today. That's basically the premise of the Fit15. In case you are new here, you can always go back to episode 000 and learn more about my whole long spiel about that. But I really believe that getting moving for 15 minutes is going to help you feel a lot better in your business and in your life. So I'm always encouraging you to do that, to get moving while listening to the show. But I am reminding you again today because my guest is going to talk about that and how it benefits her. And I would feel bad if you didn't have that extra reminder to lace up your shoes and get moving with us, whether it's walking, jogging, running, or maybe even dancing. If you find our voices to be dance worthy, that is definitely an option. So pick the, pick the poison, pick the option that you want to try. And I am going to introduce my guest while you are getting ready. So here we go. My guest today is the Stacy Harris. The Stacey Harris is a powerhouse online entrepreneur, helping her clients reach rock star status with communities full of raving fans who follow them anywhere. She has a passion for building and being active in communities and teaching folks to use networking to build relationships that grow businesses. This led to the launch of her community, Hit the Mic Backstage. Her passion for rock stars goes back to her roots. She graduated with a degree in audio engineering, ready to take the music scene by storm. She quickly started working with an up-and-coming record label, finding bands to sign and feature on their web radio station. Now returning to her web radio roots, Stacy is the host of her own show, Hit the Mic with the Stacy Harris. You can find out more and connect with the Stacy Harris at thestacyharris.com and over on Twitter at thestacyharris. Stacey, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. It's about time. I had you on my show. What did we figure out three and a half years ago? I know. Isn't it crazy? I, I thought that was funny that, you know, I'd, I'd have you on when I'm starting my first podcast show and you had me on when you were getting ready to run your first half marathon. And to be fair, it took me three years from that episode <laughs> to actually run my half marathon. <laughs> uh, I did earlier this year. Okay. But nonetheless, I mean, the thought was there. Some people don't even start training or, you know, have the thought. So, so what, so what ended up happening with, with that half, the first half? <laughs> uh, I kept chickening out like legitimately. I, I was a big chicken with it. Um, I, I ran a couple, I ran several more five K's and then last year at the end of the year, I did a 10 K and was like, okay, I can, I can totally do a half marathon. So earlier this year, like May of this year, 2017, I did a half marathon and about mile six, which is right around where a 10 K would be done. Yep. I was like, I really wish this was over. <laughs> <laughs> I only ever want to run 10 Ks from now on. <laughs> um, and here we are in November and I still firmly stand by <laughs> no, I think at some point I will probably run another half. I don't see me ever running a full. It just takes so much time. It I'm does. just not fast enough. That well, and that's what we were, we were talking about. I mean, you know, even if even if you are maybe a little fast, like there's no getting around it. You're going to spend a lot of your weekend, especially running. So <laughs> it's just a lot of time. It's just a lot. And see, that's why I like 10Ks. It's long enough for me to process all the things in my head that I need to process, which is why I like to run. But it's short enough is which I have not lost my entire day. Right, right. <laughs> That's definitely a good point. So w- which half did you end up, end up running? So I ran what's called the Tinkerbell Half Marathon at Disneyland. Yep. Now, you know, actually, the fact that you're saying that, I, one of my clients is doing her Run Disney Challenge. And so are they going to have the Tinkerbell one again this year, do you know? Or they, have they, like, stopped all Run Disney? No, they're not. They're, uh, 
Disneyland is not doing races for the next few years due to the construction of a new hotel and Star Wars land uh, and all of those things. I've run a couple of run Disney races. Um, if anyone is thinking about them, I highly recommend them. They're a okay. really fun experience. Florida still has them, has them rocking and rolling, but I don't think we'll have them back in SoCal till – and they've not given us a number. This is totally me arbitrarily making things <laughs> up. I don't expect to see them before like 2022, to be honest with you. Because they haven't even broken ground on the hotel yet, which is what they're blaming it on. Yeah, I was so. surprised. I mean, she's disappointed because she wanted to do the coast to coast. So yeah. she's really bummed too. I was, we're, t- we're talking about doing Disney World next summer, uh, or the summer after, rather. And so I was like, well, you know, maybe what I'll do, because we're, we're big Disney. This is totally off track, but we're big <laughs> Disney fans. We're annual pass holders uh, for Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And so the... The pass that's just above ours, like the, the creme de la creme pass, is actually an annual pass for both parks. Mm-hmm. And so what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade our, fast, our, our our annual passes to that the year we want to do Disney World. Because it just it financially, like we ran the numbers, it makes the most sense. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, while we have those, I should run the Florida runs yep. to do my coast to coast. See? And then they announced that Disneyland wasn't going to have any. And I was like, well, forget that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not running it if I can't get my coast to coast. <laughs> I mean, it, it definitely seems, you know, like it would be sad if you did that and didn't didn't get the extra medal. So <laughs> I can relate. I'm not running another half a marathon until I can get my coast to coast medal, <laughs> and that's when they bring them back that I can do coast to coast. And you know, before I ran my first my first half, I really had this illusion that I wanted to go to Florida and do what's called the Goofies Challenge, which is a half marathon on Saturday and a full marathon on Sunday. I would die. <laughs> <laughs> you amazing amazing people to do that are just way cooler than me in every way yeah i mean i i, I love the, the marathon's my favorite distance and i don't even know if i would want to do that so <laughs> so many miles so many miles <laughs> in so short of time but yeah no <laughs> i don't think so but yeah i highly recommend the disney races especially if you're a disney fan i think if you're not a disney fan then then totally don't do it it's not worth the the uh, investment mm-hmm. um there's too many other really great races um, but if you're a Disney fan, it's really fun. For me, I'm such a Disney nerd. I love doing them at Disneyland because you run through the back of the park, like the the, the cast member only area. Oh, okay. Like, if you're all familiar with Disneyland, you know, in D- uh, Disney California Adventures, they've got Cars Land, and for the, one of the rides, they've got this big. Um, mountain it looks it's supposed to look like you're driving through you know like a route 66 kind of thing like we ran along the back side of that and they've got you know some of the cars from autopia or the the little buggies you ride in in uh haunted mansion out and they're doing maintenance for like maintenance and painting and stuff and we get to see that kind of stuff that's cool it's just kind of a cool like stuff you don't normally see yep more Um, behind the scenes yeah for me that was super worth it because it it was just a really good time um but yeah i I ran the tinkerbell half very good very so long answer to that question i apologize yeah no i mean no no, it's good because i think you know people listening and i i've never run any disney events so it's just you know it's good for me to know to tell clients and uh, you know like just fun very good awesome so so we know now that you actually you have done your your first half you got that one checked off but how, how did you get started with running what's the story behind that so I got started, my son is now nine, so I've been running for nine years. Um, I started running when my son was, after my son was born. I had um, postpartum depression, and I, I just, meds made me super anxious, mm-hmm. and talk therapy made me want to, like, claw my own eyes out. Um, <laughs> just, I didn't care for it, and so I was talking to my doctor, and I was like, I just want to run away. And she's like, well, then do it. You've got your mom there. You've got your husband there. Leave the baby and go for a run. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> like more out of like so I could tell her something else didn't work. Um, <laughs> yep. A little insight into my personality. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, I did, and I started running, and I was like, dang it, it works. <laughs> um <laughs> And so I think, let's see, he was born in October. I did my first 5k by February. Okay. Wow. Um, That's awesome. And I've done, I've done a handful since then. Uh, and then it took me till last year to do a 10k (laughs) cause I'm a big chicken. Um, but yeah, I, I, for me, it it was very early about, and I I mean, this was before I started my business. This Mm -hmm. was, I mean, I was a stay at home mom. I was, it was, it was literally about getting my head right. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so I struggled with that for about a year. Um, and then, and then it's helped me get through that. It helped me get through. I mean, I had two miscarriages after that, but that oh, running wow. was a big part of helping me get through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then just all the trials and tribulations that go with being an entrepreneur <laughs> and yep. starting a business. Yep. Um, I started running a lot more frequently when my husband left his day job and joined me full time to work for me. Uh, that involved <laughs> a lot of running. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's sort of been my, my version of therapy for, for quite a while now. I mean, I love it. And I can definitely relate if I, if I don't run, I, uh, I, I feel like the world is just not, not right. <laughs> so. Yeah. For me, not running and not eating are sort of the shortest path to get to a really mean <laughs> version of Stacey. Actually, I heard a term recently. I think it's run gray when you're, you know, when you're a hungry runner. So nice. That's, <laughs> That's until the end of my half marathon. I was like, I want pancakes. <laughs> I know you actually, once you, when you're doing those longer runs, you definitely get hungry. Like, dur- I mean, for me, for shorter runs, I feel like sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to think about food. But when, once you get those longer runs in, you're definitely, definitely thinking about food. <laughs> so. yeah, and you know what? I, at the advice of a friend who had done a couple of halves, I did those gels, mm-hmm. um, which I had never done in a shorter run because you don't really need to do them in a shorter run. Right. Oh. Uh, but I did them with my with my my half. I was so glad I did because there were seriously points in my run, like right around six miles, that happened mm-hmm. where I was like, if I don't eat something right now, I'm gonna like just fall over and die. Yep. No, they make um, a big difference. And they do. And I I I took that and I was like, oh my god, I feel like I just started over. Like there was like some sort of reset <laughs> that only lasted about two miles. Where I was like, yeah, I just want to die again. Um, But nonetheless, it was very helpful. (laughs) But once I was done, I was like, I want to eat everything. (laughs) Just why they give you food at the end. I mean, yeah, it's 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 definitely true. And and usually they have they have pretty good, satisfying things for runners. There's a lot of great races that you can find that have probably any type of food you want featured at the end. So that's something people in Southern California. There's this thing called a runch. I hadn't heard of that. (laughs) And it's it's a it's a a a pull on run and brunch and you run a 5k and then there's a like a like a full brunch oh wow at the end of it like mimosas oh wow eggs benedicts (laughs) all the whole thing i have not run it because i feel like i could just go to brunch right Um, right that's true (laughs) uh, but yeah but but yeah it's it's a real thing um, when we do the Disney runs, I always make reservations. So we're, our family's a big fan of Goofy's Kitchen. I have a nine-year-old. So we always do Goofy's Kitchen after the runs so I can eat all the things. See? Because you feel like you've earned them. I mean. I worked for this. It's definitely true. So, so running has, has been kind of a, a therapy for you and then sure. and helping a little bit with the business you know, as part of that. But any, any other ways you could find maybe a connection with, between the running and the, and the business that you want to, want to share with us? So for me, running is always like, I think especially, I think anything in your life, there's those days where you're like, nothing works. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, and for me, I, I'm an online business owner. I, I run a membership site. There's a lot of technology reliant <laughs> in my world. There's also days where just like the Wi-Fi doesn't work or your computer crashes or that thing you just did for four and a half hours did not save or what, right. you know, whatever the thing <laughs> is. Um, running is a big part of recovering from that. Um, but also kind of when I'm stuck someplace, you know, I launched, I have a, I have a membership site. So essentially what I do is social media training and consulting. Mm -hmm. And I have a membership site that's got a ton of, of social media trainings, content, like podcast trainings, things like that. Um, and whenever I'm kind of stuck on generally these days, you know, it's, it's marketing stuff. You know, this is my primary offering. How do we get it to a new audience? How do we tell the existing audience about it in a new way? Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's kind of where my mind is. I don't know. It, I don't know if it's being out of the office or running or, or what it is, but there's there's a freedom in that sort of like thinking outside the box. Mm-hmm. Like when you're at the desk and you're trying to work through a problem and you're kind of trying to force your way through something or you know force creativity. Yep. <laughs> it does not tend to arrive. <laughs> uh, However, when I go for a run, that's when I tend to get really great ideas. I also really love to listen to to podcasts when I run, mm-hmm. um, mostly because it distracts me from the fact that I'm running. <laughs> it's funny. I equal parts love and hate running. It's it's bizarre. Um, but so also, and I'll get all, I'll get ideas. And I'll be like, oh my god, why didn't I think of that? Because I'm I'm genuinely listening. 
So I, I right. do this when I buy like courses and trainings. I'll listen to them when I run because it seeps in at a deeper level. Sure. So I have a lot of very like <gasps> uh, audio notes on my phone. <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> Trying to express an idea that I'm going to have to try to pay attention to later. Um, Surrey does a fairly good job of understanding my like hyperventilating. <laughs> Cause the more excited I get about an idea, the harder I'll run. And so I'll be like, okay, we've reached a level at which I should, I do not have the skill for this. <laughs> I have not trained to this level of running excited. I need to calm down. Um, but yeah, so I do a lot of, I'll listen to podcasts and I'll sort of get inspired or a lot of times I get a lot of people say they get their best content ideas in the shower. I get my best content ideas running mm -hmm. um, because I don't know, my brain just functions differently. And it's funny because I started, I started weight training um, when I started, cause I needed an alternate, I needed to do something besides run. Yep. Uh, and so I started doing weight training um, and lifting weights last year. Um, something I need to get back into cause I've, I've totally fallen off, but that's a whole other sh episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's completely different. I always thought like, well, it's just exercise. No, it's running because when I'm weight training, I'm literally just thinking, don't break yourself. Right. <laughs> like, I'm so incredibly focused on not blowing out my knee. Cause that means I won't be able to run when I'm trying to <laughs> squats with whatever amount of weight my trainer has decided I'm strong enough to hold that day. <laughs> Um, which is inevitably 15 pounds heavier than it were 10 pounds or whatever it is heavier than it was the day before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, don't blow out your knees doing these squats because you're going to be super pissed. That you can't run anymore. <laughs> um, so I get no ideas during that. So it's, it's definitely something for me that's unique to running is this idea that it sort of clears my head and almost in a way that makes space mm -hmm. for something new to show up in there. Yeah, and I love that you share that. And I, I've I found talking to many entrepreneurs, you know, that's something I've experienced myself. But that it's a very similar experience of you know just getting more ideas, and, and that's that's actually why you know with this podcast I encourage people to walk for the 15 minutes of the episode because that's kind of the you know science has kind of told us that the 15 minute you know, getting away from your computer and doing that movement of any type, you know, you could go and dance to the podcast, I guess, if, if we sound musical to you. Um, so you have three o'clock dance parties in my office. See? So, but yeah, I, mean, I love the, it's just me at the dance party. <laughs> That's really for the best. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, I don't know. I feel people were trying to get me into to doing some, a dance party and, and showing it. I'm like, mm, I think we're just going to keep it. I'll do it for, you know, to see how it, it helps me out, but I'm not going to be publicizing that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to share it with others, <laughs> but the, yeah, I mean, I'll dance like nobody's watching, but nobody needs to be watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like nobody's watching for a reason, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. See? Yeah. And actually I think, you know, um, I don't know if you stayed to the end, but we actually both met up at, um, we were both at the eWomen network, uh, conference that year when Sean Aker was the speaker at the end. Were you able to, to hear him speak? I did. He was great. Because he was actually talking about, he called it the fun 15, right? Of getting up and getting moving for all these same reasons that we're talking about. So, you know, for people listening and thinking, oh, you know, okay, fitting and fitness, that's great. My doctor told me to do it, but I'm not really sure if I want to. Any goal that you have, you can come back to your desk and feel, feel more creative, more productive. And it's not just me that has that experience. <laughs> and, and for me, stepping away, especially when I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm trudging that I'm kind of forcing or like moving uphill with a project. It sounds counterintuitive to like walk away from it, mm -hmm. but that's the fastest way to get something done for, in my experience. And this is something I have to literally remind myself every time where I'm like, you know, like we're recording this th the week of Thanksgiving. So I've yeah. got three days instead of five days this week. And that's <laughs> not a great time for me to have that. Um, just cause it's, it's all kind of, it's been one of those weeks. Yep. Um, and so yesterday was Monday and I had this, I had, I had literally like three days worth of stuff on, on my to-do list. Something I would recommend to no client, um, <laughs> ever. In fact, it's what I tell everyone not to do. Cause it was all marketing stuff. Like it was, it was getting, you know, opt-in pages optimized and email sequences written and, and content created. And it was just, it was just a, a intense day. And <laughs> I was like, I can't, I won't have time. I won't have time. I have to do this. I have to do this. And it was funny because I got home last night and I was like, you know, if I had just gone for a run at the beginning of the day, my day would have been entirely different. Like I just, I knew. Yep. Like, no, I think I sometimes it takes those experiences, right? <laughs> to, to remind ourselves. 
<sighs> it's always fun when we learn the same lesson over and over. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Sometimes I'll, like, I mean, I, I love running. That's kind of how I got started in fitness. Before that, you know, I, I was terrified of anything fitness related because it reminded me of gym class, which I'm, I'm still uncoordinated. I wasn't coordinated when I was in, in gym class, but basically it was, yeah. it was not fun. So, you know, I, I know that running has that effect on me, you know, probably more than anyone, but sometimes I feel like, you know, when I go for those runs on those days that I didn't feel like going or there were too many things to do in my business and I come back and I'm like, wow, I feel better. I should just make a note like, or like a big, a big sign. Like you still need to go for your run. You are going to feel better. Right. So happens to all yes. of us. <laughs> We totally do. And it's funny because, you know, it's funny that you said that about gym class. I was the kid who would, like, use any possible excuse to get out of running the mile. <laughs> like, I was all about sports. Like, I played softball. I played soccer. Um, I played soccer when I was really young, and then I played softball, you know, up until high school. Um, so, like, I was I was athletic. Yep. But just straight up running for the sake of running made no sense <laughs> to me. <laughs> like, who does that? Yep. Some, some people, right? <laughs> Crazy people who Crazy apparently people. is us. People, you know, but people, they, they say, like, how can you run for so long? What do you, like, think? And I actually, I, I have started listening to podcasts on my runs because, well, especially with the, the marathon training, it's like, I, I wouldn't be able to listen to them otherwise, right? So, but, right. like, you know, it's, what it's, do you... It's your whole day. Right? But they're like, what do you think about? I'm like, you don't understand. I have plenty of things I can think about on my run. I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm like, well, it's, it's funny because this is something... And this is totally off topic, but I will look at my husband sometimes and be like, what are you thinking? And he's like, nothing. And he's not lying. I'm like, what is that like? I don't understand how that works. We have and so when people ask me, like, hey, what do you do when you're running? And I'm like, I'm, my brain is running, too, through plans, through strategies, what I need to do, what I need to hand off to that client next week, you know. <laughs> How did that client hand off for that other project go? Or, you know, what's going on for the membership site? Like, my brain is pretty much going all the time. Yep. Yep. So I guess, you know, definitely for the people that, f- that feel that way, running will be, will be a help. <laughs> it's magic. I, I, I really enjoy it for exactly that. Awesome. Well, Stacey, it's been really fun having you on the show and sharing how your running has helped you in your personal and entrepreneurial journey. And like I shared with you, as an entrepreneur myself and small business owner, I tend to hang out with a lot of other entrepreneurs and small business owners and am always trying to get them moving more for the benefits we talked about today. But that can only go so far in helping them have you know, more creativity, more energy and focus. It's also important to make sure that we are working smarter and not harder. And that's what you can really offer them if they check out what you have to offer. So can you share with us what that is and where the entrepreneurial and small business owners can go to learn more. So I'm over at the Um, and that's where you'll find my podcast, all mm-hmm. 370 some episodes of it. <laughs> um, which is that not at all about running, by the way, <laughs> no running expertise whatsoever over there. Um, and basically essentially what I do is I, I, I help online entrepreneurs, um, market online and we do that in a real sort of real talk real results no nonsense kind of way I'll tell you what you need to know nothing more nothing less Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm big on not making you think I'm smarter than you because I'm not I just (laughs) happen to have a different set of information and I can give that to you I cannot fix stupid I can totally fix uninformed (laughs) Um, and we do that through the membership site which is called hit the mic backstage um, because my podcast is called hit the mic. So the membership site is sort of the next step after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there we've got social media trainings, podcast trainings. Um, we've got guest experts who've come in and talked about PR and pitching yourself and video and blogging and, and a ton of other amazing stuff like Google analytics and, and all that good stuff. So we've got a ton of great content, um, plus two private communities where you can ask me questions anytime you want, which is the biggest benefit of the membership versus the podcast is you get mm. direct access to me. Uh, and all of that is at hiddenlinebackstage.com. But of course, that all links from the Stacey Harris. And if you if you literally look the Stacey Harris up on whatever it is your preferred channel might be, you will probably find me. Awesome. And one thing I wanted to add is that your show is about 15 minutes long too. And one thing I tell people to do is to get moving during my show for 15 minutes to get the added focus, creativity, and energy that moving more will give them, but to also do that a second time and potentially do that while listening to a podcast show. So your show would be a great compliment if they want to do that 
starting later on today. I was say, my show is also about 15 minutes. Yep. <laughs> so it's perfect. It is definitely perfect. So you get, you know, get the motivation to go out there for your second 15 minutes and then come back and actually implement all the great tips because I have to tell you, Stacey, I know I'm making my show longer than 15 minutes now, but that's okay. But <laughs> They won't notice. I mean, yeah, it'll be okay. They can keep walking a little longer. But I have to say, like, I, a lot of the tips, I keep laughing to myself because, you know, I tell people for their fitness plans, you know, what they should be doing. And, and a lot of the things you're saying, like, oh, yeah, I really do need to do that basic thing first before I add on all these other things. And, yep. and right, right now I'm in the stage of just being reminded, 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 uh, and then hopefully I will start taking the action and, and maybe I, I need, you know, some more one-on-one help, but, but definitely like I found a lot of value in, in listening to it just, you know, for getting back to basics, reminding myself to get back to basics before doing anything else, but then, you know, learning a lot more, you know, from there. So I highly recommend, you know, people tune in. They won't be feeling overwhelmed coming away with like a thousand things they have to do, but they can take right. you know, targeted action after listening to your show. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, if I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of meeting people where they're at and, and what they need. And, and that's why backstage actually has a level that we call BAM, which is the backstage amplifier mastermind. Mm-hmm. Um, which it actually has a monthly one-on-one call with me. So you get all the stuff with BAM, plus you get some one-on-one support with me. Um, for those people who are like, I know I keep listening to your trainings, and I know I keep listening to your podcasts, <laughs> but I need some accountability of people telling me, like, I'm going to message you because we have a private area of the forum that's just me and you. Mm-hmm. And I will go, how is this week going? Did you do X, Y, Z? <laughs> and sometimes that accountability makes all the difference. It's the same, you know, it, it's funny because we talk about all of these things kind of independently, our fitness, our marketing, our business, the same lessons tend to apply over and over and over again. It's true. For me, I had to start working out with a personal trainer because I needed the accountability of doing something besides running. Right, right. Um, <laughs> it's like, I won't do it on my own. Um, and so I, I needed that. So I got that support. Um, you know, for, for someone else, it's, you know, they need the accountability of, of executing some marketing stuff or, or launching a program or finishing their book. And so they hire a coach or a, an assistant or whoever it is that can help them with that. Uh, and so it's, it, it, that's one of the things, and again, we're going over, but that's one of the things I like most about running is it probably feels the most like my business as far as the execution of it. Yep. No, that's, that's true. I, I feel a lot of lessons I've learned about life and business have come from, come from running. So everyone, after listening to this episode, they need to just go out and, and even just run for a minute because they'll start to see. <laughs> True. Start getting getting hugged. Well, thank you again, Stacey. Uh, hopefully everyone will go and check out your show after listening to this one today so they can get some good insights for their business. And, uh, and we'll see you around. Awesome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, of course. It was my pleasure and a lot of fun. All right, guys. So you heard it from someone other than myself, an unbiased individual, the Stacey Harris, that running is magical. So if you haven't believed it, when I've shared that sentiment in the past, I hope that you will take Stacy's word for it and maybe try out some running on your own this week. I look forward to hearing how that goes if you do. And definitely remember what I shared with you with Stacy there is to get moving for a second period of 15 minutes, maybe by listening to Stacy's show. If you are a small business owner or entrepreneur and would find a benefit from the show, I, I know I do when I listen. So Hope you go check that out. For show notes and all the links to everything we talked about today during today's show, head on over to fitarmadillo.com slash podcast. If you're new here and are wondering about some of the things I'm sharing today and what that strange noise was halfway through the episode, head on over to the same page, fitarmadillo.com slash podcast, to learn more by checking out episode 000. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day, week, workouts, and that you will tune in to the next episode of the Fit 15. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time.